Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Baseball with head coach J.R. Cheese, presented by your local Southern Quality Ford dealers, Champagne Beverage, and also Benny's Place right here in downtown Hammond. It's now time to take a look at our Lion Feature of the Week. And this week we profile a actually a Southeastern football coach who's one of the Lions' biggest fans, Coach Travis Michael. Travis Michael begins his second season as an assistant coach on the Southeastern Louisiana University football staff, serving as offensive line coach and the team's director of football operations. It's Michael's job to make sure the Lions are strong up front every day, not just when the fans are in the stands. I think we're on our way. Um, you know, day in, day out, we're getting better. Um, biggest thing we have to do is you know, get the mentality that we're looking for uh, when it comes to playing up front. Because at the end of the day, when, uh, when the game's over, we, we want that opposing defense line and, and linebacker court to really understand and feel uh, like they, they went to war. Um, you know, of course, we want to be on the, on the top side of that. Um, biggest thing with us up front is we got to understand what it takes uh, day in and day out that leads up to Saturday. Uh, the mentality, intensity in the weight room, uh, the intensity on the field at practice, uh, individual, everything. Before his arrival in Hammond, Michael spent three seasons at Delta State under head coach Ron Roberts, where he served in the same capacity, including the last two years at Delta State as offensive line coach. Despite being a football coach, Michael's real close to the other coaches and athletes at the university, so close that he describes it as one big happy family. It is a family, uh, and I, I don't think we can be totally successful as, a, as an athletic department unless we take that as a, a family type relationship. And I think it's very important that we go and we support the other athletes and other teams and you know, the other coaches know we're there. Um, that way, you know, because those kids, they feed off of it. The more folks are in the stands, the more folks are hooting and hollering for them, they, they feed off that energy. Travis has been seen at soccer, volleyball, basketball, and his second love, baseball. And despite his short time on the Hammond campus, Travis has become a big time Lion fan. I do it from the standpoint of uh, you know, that's the way I was brought up, that's the way I was raised, you know, throughout college and throughout, you know, uh, you know my, my five years coaching, um, because that's really what it takes to be successful as an athletic department, and we don't want just one team to be successful, we want them all to be successful, because at the end of the day, that helps us as a university. Uh, we are the front doorstep of this university. Travis has become really close to Coach R. Teagues and his staff and team, and during the Fall World Series, Michael coached a little baseball. I think their coaching staff is, uh, they're great people. Uh, first and foremost, they're great people. And uh, I, I think personally, you know, after being here a little over a year, that, uh, you know, we need more people like that around here. Um, you know, and, and they're fun to watch. Uh, you know, they coach baseball the way we coach football. And their mentality as a baseball team is the same mentality that we take in day in, day out with our football team. Um, so, you know, that's kind of why I've gravitated to them. And I think it's kind of vice versa for them, too. I think that's the reason why they come to us. And they kind of gravitated to us because we are a lot alike. When it comes to football, Coach Ron Roberts and his staff are very serious on and off the field, but when the day's done, they love to joke around with each other and have fun. So much fun, in fact. Well, just take a look at what happened during this interview when Michael was talking about his offensive line. Uh, we have uh, two more junior college guys coming. we got one more freshman coming. Ah! That shaving cream bomb came courtesy of defensive coordinator and Michael's former roommate, Pete Golding, and it caught Travis totally by surprise. Coach Golden, uh, known coach for about 10, 11 years now, uh, played college ball with him. We, we lived together for probably a total of two or three years uh, until he, he just had his, you know, got married and had his little boy, so he was probably getting me back for something I've done somewhere along the last 10, 11 years. Are the wheels starting to turn about how you will get him back? Now? Oh, I will get him back. I can promise you that. But the thing with Pete Golden is, is you, you can't get even. He's always going to try to stay one on top of you. So, um, But I will. I, I promise you. <laughs> well, if you haven't met Travis Michael, I tell you, this guy is full of energy. And, Coach, one thing that really jumps out to me, uh, especially the last couple of years, is, is the way that the coaches around campus uh, are really supporting each other's program. And this guy's a football coach, but he's at most of your home games. Well, you know, a lot of schools, people talk about being a family atmosphere. Here it really is. You know, Southeastern, 
is a family feel, and it's because of guys like Travis, you know, one of our football coaches. You go to football games, you're going to see the baseball team. You know, you go to basketball games, you're going to see the football team. It, it, it's, it's a family atmosphere, and Travis Michael, and you know, what a great job they do as a coaching staff in our football program, and it's contagious. They really do a great job with all the programs. It was also very nice to see him get hit in the face with that, uh, that shaving cream right there. That was pretty funny right there on the interview. As It's now time to, time to take a look at our Tip of the Week with Coach Artis. Hi, welcome to this week's Tip of the Week. This week, our pitching coach, Coach Daniel Latham, is going to explain to you the process that a starting pitcher goes through in his routine to get ready to make a start at the collegiate level. All right, we're going to talk this week about how our starting pitchers prepare themselves for a start at the collegiate level. All right, typically, we'll treat it as a home game. Typically, our guys will head out about 30 minutes prior to the first pitch of the game, and they'll start doing their, uh, their running or their calisthenics or whatever kind of stretching they do. Most of our guys have their own routine that they go through, but generally, it all starts about 30 minutes prior to with stretching or light jogging or calisthenics. Um, from there, all of our guys will go into their throwing. Um, a lot of our guys like the long toss, uh, make sure they're fully loose before they go into their throwing in the bullpen. That'll usually take place about 25 minutes till the game starts and takes generally eight to 10 minutes for them to be completed with that. As soon as they get done with that, they'll throw a light flat ground about 50 feet to the catcher standing outside uh, of the bullpen. We haven't gone in the bullpen yet. So we've gotten a lot of throwing done. They've worked on all their pitches. Um, have a feel for their changeup, their breaking ball, their fastball, whatever it is that they're throwing that day. So that'll take us up until about 15 minutes prior to the game starting. Um, from there, they'll work their way about 15 minutes before into the bullpen. Start, we always start with our catchers in front of home plate um, and throw you know, 10 to 15 pitches in front of home plate, get a feel for the mound, get a feel for their mechanics, start repeating their delivery a little bit. Um, from there, they'll start, move the catcher back, we'll go into a full bullpen sequence, They'll usually throw 25 to 30 pitches full out um, to the catcher, whatever it is that we're trying to work on that day, whatever our approach is that day for the other team, whatever pitch we need to work more on, we'll throw then, um, which takes us to about eight to 10 minutes before the game starts. They'll normally take a break, towel off, take a drink of water, and then we'll always work at least two hitters, um, right-handed and left-handed. The last hitter we work with a guy standing in will be whatever the leadoff hitter is of that game. We'll usually work through whatever sequence we think we're gonna throw that game, um, whatever pitches we need to emphasize that game, whether we got to throw the fastball in, we got to do a good job with breaking balls early in count, we'll work on it then, um, make sure they're prepared to get out on the field. First pitch of the game needs to be their best pitch of the game. Um, we'll make sure they're prepared about five minutes prior to, after the umpires meet with Coach Artigues at home plate. Pitchers will head back to the dugout, get themselves ready, and as soon as they're ready to take the field, we rock and roll with it. And that is this week's Tip of the Week. Well, Coach, usually our tip of the week is with you, but this week Daniel Latham actually steps in there and uh, shows us the preparation a, t a pitcher takes before the game. Is He doesn't just run out to the mound and start throwing. There's a lot that goes into that. Well, I thought it was really good this week to show people what the starting pitcher does. Use Coach Latham to demonstrate our starting pitcher's routine, help a young pitcher kind of see the routine and what it takes to get ready to make a start. All right, well, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to take a look at the Southland Conference standings and the scouting report for this weekend right here on Inside Southeastern Baseball with head coach JRTs presented by your local Southern Quality Four Dealers, Champagne Beverage, and also Benny's Place right here in downtown Hammond. Stay with us. Right. 